This video is on threat intelligence sources. There are 10 different sources you should memorize for the Security Plus 601 exam. First, we have OSINT or Open Source Intelligence. It refers to intelligence data gathered from open or public sources. It's basically collecting information from multiple sources available to everyone. You'll be very surprised what kind of data you can get using open source intelligence. Googling away is technically open source intelligence. Next, we have Closed Proprietary. This is something that is owned and controlled by an individual or organization. Therefore, closed data is something that is confined to a business or competitive use, like the Coca-Cola secret recipe. For protecting proprietary data, the law of secrecy, copyright, patent are used. Next, we have vulnerability databases. The U.S. National Vulnerability Database, NVD, was launched by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. The common vulnerability and exposure CVE entities are frequently checked and uploaded to the database, the NVD, which automates vulnerability management, security, and compliance management using CVE entries to provide enhanced information for each entity and much more. Next, we have public-private information sharing centers. Information sharing and analysis organizations are nonprofit organizations that provide a central resources for gathering information on cyber threats, as well as allow two-way sharing of information between private and public sector about root causes, incidents, and threats, as well as sharing experience, knowledge, and analysis. In many EU member states, ISAC or information sharing and analysis organizations or similar initiatives exist. It's basically a place where companies come together. Next, we have Dark Web. We all heard of the Dark Web and Tor by now. Dark Web is part of the World Wide Web that is only accessible using certain browsers. It has numerous hidden collective of internet sites only accessible to those who use specific browsers, and it offers numerous information and tools from malware scripts to someone's credit card information at a cost. Next, we have Indicators of Compromise. What this is is piece of forensic data such as data or information found in syslog. Compromise indicators assist information security and IT professionals detect data breaches, malware infections, and other threat actors. Organizations can use this to detect attacks and act rapidly to prevent breaches or limit the damage by stopping attacks in early stages. Also using chain of custody, it helps the law enforcement as well. Next, we have Automated Indicator Sharing, AIS. This enables real-time exchange of machine-readable cyber threat indicators and defensive measures to help protect AIS community members. For this, you need to memorize STIX and TAXI. STIX is a Structured Threat Information Expression. It's an open-source community-driven project developed by MITRE for U.S. Department of Homeland Security is a standardized XML programming language for conveying data about cybersecurity threats in a common language that can be easily understood. Then we have Taxi, Trusted Automated Exchange of Intelligence Information. This is the core transport mechanism for cyber threat information represented in STIX. It is an application protocol for exchanging CTI over HTTPS. Next, we have Predictive Analysis. Predictive analytics software applications employ variables that can be measured and analyzed to forecast the likely behavior of people, machines, and other entities. It has wide range of applications from forecasting inflation, depending on certain situations, to insurance calculations for all drivers with certain driving safety variables like health, gender, location, and driving record. Next, we have threat maps. Threat mapping is another term for vulnerability mapping. You're basically trying to identify a weakness in an environment to find flaws and other security concerns. Lastly, we have file or code repositories. Code repositories serve primarily as a central storage location for developers' source code. It's like GitHub and SourceForge. It provides version control, bugs tracking, web hosting, release management, and communications functions that support software development.